Since the mid-twenties, Britain's Air Ministry had been carrying out tests on all metal seaplanes. Its prototype monoplane featured twin engines and a streamlined design. Metal hulls were about 25% lighter than wooden ones, and when the water soakage of a wooden hull was taken into account, the weight saving was even greater. The wooden Cromarty flying boat, built in 1920, absorbed more than 600 pounds of water into her planking after just a few weeks in service. All metal construction also guaranteed watertight joints, making it unnecessary to use a bilge pump to remove excess water. The Blackburn Dart torpedo bomber was wheeled out of the hangar in the early 1920s. Unusually for its time, the biplane was designed with two bay equal span wings that were staggered and swept. It was powered by either a high-powered Napier Lion 2B or V engine, enabling it to carry a significant load. With floats attached, the seaplane variant was a tractor biplane, with two floats of boat-built construction extending far enough behind to make a tail float redundant. It was so well trimmed at takeoff speed that the pilot could take his hands off the controls and still remain steady. Wheels fitted to the undercarriage were not intended to be used for landing, but for transporting the seaplane across the ground once it had landed on water. The biplane's wings were made of wood, designed to be foldable, and the fuselage was part wood, part metal. The machine was very stable on the water, as the strut attachments were partly direct to the fuselage and partly direct at the point of attachment of the sloping outrigger struts. Its top speed was about 100 miles an hour and a rate of climb at sea level approximately 600 feet a minute. In 1925, English aeroplane designer Reginald Mitchell constructed the Schneider S4 Supermarine prototype. The high-speed seaplane was intended to compete in the Schneider Trophy Air Race, a French competition that awarded £1,000 to the team that flew the fastest, most seaworthy amphibious aeroplane. In 1921, the Supermarine Sea Lion II, another Mitchell design, had won the trophy despite being less technologically developed than other seaplanes in the competition. The S4 was far more advanced, featuring the cantilevered designs pioneered by Hugo Junkers and a single engine, the Napier Lion 7. Unfortunately, the S4 crashed and was destroyed during trials in Baltimore. Pilot H.C. Bayard survived. But the lessons learned from its development were incorporated into future Mitchell designs, including the legendary Spitfire. Next off the blocks was the Supermarine S5, created for the 1927 trophy race. Mitchell made the wing lower than the S4, and wing surface radiators replaced the Lamblin radiators of the original design. But the Napier Lion engine remained, and S5 racers came first and second in the air race. Flight Lieutenant Webster flew the winning aeroplane at an average speed of 282 miles an hour. Advances in float plane technology made amphibian planes increasingly popular for passenger services. Air Union introduced a service from France to England using a Shrek FBA flying boat in the mid-twenties. The vessel landed on the Thames River on its arrival in London and passengers disembarked onto rowing boats. On the continent, the Dornier DOJ set the standard for twin-engined flying boats. Designed by Germany's Claude Dornier, the whale had to be manufactured in Italy to comply with the terms of the Treaty of Versailles, which forbade a German aviation industry. Rugged and powerful, Dornier Val flew expeditions to the most remote parts of the globe and served in several air forces. At the smaller end of the scale was the Sea Flea. Billed as half a plane, half a boat, 
1927, the tiny craft sped down the Thames at Putney at 75 miles an hour, demonstrating its aquatic abilities. Piloted by Ukrainian engineer George Degasenko, the float glider crossed the English Channel in 20 minutes, averaging 93 miles per hour. With a hull made from mahogany, drawing only three inches of water, the craft weighed only 2,000 pounds when loaded with fuel. The aircraft skimmed the water, and as it gained speed, crested the waves with perfect balance. Degasenko made an earlier attempt to travel across the Mediterranean from Marseille to Africa in the Sea Flea, but the propeller was splintered in rough seas, and he had to dock for repairs. 